All right, and we are live with Sebastian. Sebastian, how are you, my friend? Doing pretty well. Really nice to see you, Sunny. Yes, yes, likewise. So uh, the place I usually like to start is where did we first meet? I'm, and I never can remember quite exactly, but <laughs> it must neither. have been... Uh, must have been a DCG event. Yeah, I was going to say, it must have been a DCG event, right? Yes, Probably, what, 2015, 2016, maybe sometime? No, time, I right? know. It wasn't at, at Boost BC? Some, somewhere like in the in an event from our so well it was about that time yeah maybe it was boost anyway I, actually, boost. I think it was dcg i don't know why but but whatever yeah. so it's one of those one of those investor kind of summits uh yes. back in 2015 and and you know you've been one of the people that have been you know doing similar but different things in the sense that you know in a different part of the world but with a similar kind of i guess overall mission and goal yes so really wanted to spend a little bit of time with you and really help um, uh, help people understand your story around, you know, kind of like where you were coming from, uh, coming into the, the Bitcoin singularity and then kind of leaving it and, you know, and kind of how it's maybe shaped some of your decisions and your businesses uh, in the last, you know, five, 10 years. Um, yeah. So maybe start sure. with, where, you know, your story. Yes. Let's, let's start from the, well, so we're going to start from the early beginning. So um, I was born in Buenos Aires. Uh, my my father and my mother they, they met each other studying uh, political science uh, in a in a moment was was very tough for for Argentina well, uh, it has very cyclical crisis but but it was in the in in the end of a dictatorship it wasn't a really nice place to be in Buenos Aires and when I was born they decided to move into a farm in the middle of the Patagonia. Uh, in a small town called Chuele Chuel. And for, so, so I grew up in, well, in, first in a country that has a history of, of many economical crises. Like I seen like, there is, is more than one every 10 year. Uh, I, I seen three major ones. There is one that is currently happening right now. Uh, and then so, uh, for some reason, when I, I think it was at seven, eight, I, I saw a magazine about computers and I, I got fascinated by, by them. And I, and I asked my father to buy a computer maybe for an entire year. And then he got me, uh, when I was eight, he got, got me a Commodore 64, which was an already an old computer. It was a, a used computer. Um, but the, and the only thing you could do in that was into, into code, into program, and I, and I started learning to code uh, at eight. First, starting to do video games or other things, but super nerd all my life, carrying books everywhere. And, and I, so, and then when I was uh, 14, 15, in a trip to Buenos Aires, I saw a, a, a cyber coffee in a shopping mall. And, and I thought, whoa, this is amazing. Like, I saw the internet for the first time. And then that took me, it, it will all connect to Bitcoin, but it, it will take a, a, a bit of, a, a second to get there. But so when I was finishing high school with some other people, we built the first ISP, the first internet service provider of my, my hometown. Uh, it was a dial-up, but it was like building the access to the internet. It was like, this is, this is an amazing thing. And some people got together and I got to be part of a, a team of people that built an ISP. And that was kind of like the first experience into a startup and, and into, into technology and into, into the internet. What, then, year, what, what year did you say you were in now? 20, I mean, the, sorry, the, that was 1998, 1999. And then I went to, um, and, and then I went to the university. Um, I, at first I studied physics, so super nerd. Uh, and, and then, but I dropped out because it was kind of like, uh, I don't, I studied, I ended up studying computer science. It was like, I'm, I don't want to make papers for the rest of my life. I want to build things. Um, so then after that, uh, did many things, um, but, and, before Repio, which is my current company, was uh, running um, uh, 
a consulting firm doing like software development for for other like mostly startups in the US. Mm. So in 2012, there was another crisis. There was a, a previous crisis in, in Argentina that had a very strong capital controls. And I was trying to charge clients and like in, in, when it was also difficult to, uh, to store value either in, in uh, and it was, there were many restrictions of all like uh, even buying dollars and then uh, I was looking for alternatives to, to charge online and to get paid. Uh, and I was already seeing Bitcoin in like 2011, but I, I disregarded it in the first time I saw it. Um, and then in 2012, with this necessity, I, start, I started to explore it and did a few transactions. They work. And then I started to dig into the technology. And then at the end of 2012, I was like very into the Bitcoin, like like Bitcoin uh, from mining and all, all other things. Uh, started to participate in the first Bitcoin meetups in in Buenos Aires, and then in March I decided, well, this is uh, this like it, it was kind of like a deja vu. Like I was uh, at, at that point, it was like this is a technology as important as the internet, uh, and and this is going to change the 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 world and I had to be part of it. And then it was kind of like a deja vu with, with that first uh, experience with the ISP, which is a, the, f the first thing that we need to do is to build a, the infrastructure. We need to build the things that help people to get access into crypto, into cryptocurrencies and, and all the technology. So uh, the, our first, uh, attempt on that was starting to do uh, payment processing, which we at, at that time it was called Bitpagos, where we were helping merchants to to the kind of like a reverse bit pay, where you will charge clients and the client they will pay with credit cards, but the merchant will get Bitcoin, which was relevant only for Argentina. Uh, but immediately after that, we noticed that well, we need someone to buy these bitcoins from the merchants, so they have like. So we complete this, this, this cycle and like make it a, an economy that is building. Um, and then we'll say, well, but there is no one building a wallet here. So what, then we launched Rapio, which was the wallet to, uh, so that people in Argentina was able to buy and sell Bitcoin. That was 2014. And then from there we say, well, the, the, our, we expanded our vision. And we said, well, we need to build all the infrastructure, like all the, uh, products and services for people to access this technology. What what what, what was it though about? Because you you said uh, you kind of explained you know your backstory and then you said when you saw Bitcoin you know you're kind of like you realized that this was something that was going to be big. Um, but what was it about Bitcoin uh, more specifically? I guess like that that attracted you. Like what what elements about it was it? You said it was like the internet of money of sorts. But like you know that's a big statement right like how do you how do you get get from uh yeah from zero to one on that one <laughs> yeah i i guess like being argentinian is it it makes the the entire value proposition much easier to understand when you're like your local currency is basically drops in value 90 percent every 10 years um so there is like now um the like a year ago, one dollar was thirty pesos. Right now, it's one hundred fifty. Uh, so, so it dropped eighty percent in value, like in, in just one year. And, and this is has to do with a very complicated mechanism mechanisms on the on the on, on the Argentinian economy uh, that has a ton of political reasons, but. So like, we don't have like we we see firsthand how bad can be done uh, the monetary policy of a country, and so so that that is one aspect. Like know how many bitcoins are gonna be in any point of time, uh, it makes it so much better as a uh, as a way to to store value for for long long term. And then I think it's, it's the, the other aspect that at least uh, I mean, to me as a person that like, 
loves technology is that I think like like in in, in a historical moment in in humanity, we are currently in a in an era where everything is being is everything is being touched and transformed by by software, and everything is becoming software. And when I when I notice that every Bitcoin transaction was on a script, that that is a that is code that executes. It's not just a, a it's not just an entry on a database. It's a it's a piece of soft, software that executes, and, and it has a behavior. To me, it was whoa! This is money becoming software. This is money that stopped being a, a an static thing, uh, just just a unit of accounting into something that started to to have behavior. Uh, and this is the future of money um, because it's, it's, there's going to be so many things that we don't even imagine that are going to be embedded into money uh, that 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 is just click uh, and and I, and I even feel I, I agree a lot with like that be like software and code is not going to page so like AI is not going to pay each other with PayPal or dollars. From like they're gonna pay themselves with with crypto, and, and it, it makes total sense. Um, no, not these other things that that are built from the past. So that I think that that was like the thing for me that was very clear early on, and not to everybody, <laughs> but but it it just started to become more and more more proven with with time. Yeah, no, I think a lot of people miss that, right? Like the fact that Bitcoins are limited to 21 million, you know, there yeah. was no pre-mine. It just kind of emerged and, you know, it's it's kind of a beautiful thing, right? And <clears throat> a lot of people say that, you know, in places like North America, it's kind of missed like the real opportunity, right? In terms of in terms of how big this can really be as, as a service to cut in, in countries where, where, yeah, where maybe monetary policy isn't favoring its citizens. Um, so what, what happens next in your story? So in terms of, uh, so in terms of, so you, you discover Bitcoin, you you decide to build, uh, you said it was, it was it called Ripio at no, the time they, then they, in 2014? In 2013, 2014, it was called Bitpagos when we were doing uh, payment Pagos, processing. Right? I remember that. And okay. then, mm -hmm. uh, then we launched the wallet and then we rename everything to, to Ripio. Uh, so got you, got you. Okay. So when you launched, what, so what date or what month or year was it around approximately when you guys launched? We launched in uh, April, uh, 2013. Wow. So we are okay. Seven years okay. Old. So what, what did that look like? What did that look like? Was it like just quietly? Was it at a conference? Did you throw a party in your, in your house <laughs> or what did you do? I, I think like, I don't know. Like, well, so it, it was like, um, so my, my, uh, the people I was working on the, uh, on the consulting uh, firm was like, wasn't very excited to, to get into build into crypto. Uh, some some of us yes, and uh, so part of the team comes comes, comes from from that that team, and, and one of my co-founders come, come from there, and but then for for the rest wasn't so it was kind of like the first part was kind of like a, a transition and a and a work on on the side, and so in, in April. With my one of my co-founders, he was working at a at a, a company that was doing um, cameras for um, light field photography, and he took one week off, and and I and I took that that week off too to code a prototype for what what would be bit powers, and then we at, at at that point we we hadn't had any funding yet. So uh, we we work through this week building this prototype, and then so so we had something to show and to try to get at least a few clients to to, to prove through prove that there was a market for that. And and at that time, so at that time I was in in San Francisco and I was trying to uh, make what today we would call a pre-seed. 
and so trying to hustle there and to get uh, uh, some uh, to get funding um, and, and and at that time it was kind of like difficult because you had to have like like to get a, 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 an investor you had like you had to have like three conversations one conversation was uh, about uh, Bitcoin itself the the a second conversation will be about well I was in I wasn't wasn't going to get funding for this in in Argentina so I was like but it was hot at that time in in the Silicon Valley and at least it was people trying to kind of understand what this thing was but most people did not even knew about Bitcoin um, but then. And then a second conversation will be about Argentina, what was important for Argentina. And then a third one was, at, in, and just at the end, we will talk about the product and why this makes sense. It was like a two hour process and it was difficult to get the attention of an investor for, for such a long time. So I remember like the, the first, so I, I one a friend told me that, that Adam Draper was investing, like from BuzzBC, was investing in starting to look into crypto, and uh, and then uh, I I was scraping. I got a friend that got uh, his sis, his sister and made an intro to her, and then I got a phone call with us, uh, and I made like I tried to explain over uh, the phone what I was doing to Adam. He already knew a little bit about Bitcoin because he had been, he, he recently had been invest, invested in Coinbase. Uh, so so he, he already was like, it was part of the conversation that wasn't um, necessary. But then he did not understand why this was important for South America. Why like, and then, so then like, uh, when we had this prototype, we like built the brand and we went into the first, um, the, we went to the kind of like the first important conference for Bitcoin, which was uh, May 2013 in San Jose. It was a conference where, where there was a thousand people before everything was kind of like a small meetups. But this was a conference that had a thousand people and, and there were a ton of companies that are today uh, existing. Like, uh, you know, we, we got a boot there, like we paid for, for uh, to having a boot at the conference. And then on our right was BitPay, and, and on our left was Leisure, and in the back was Coinbase and Kraken. And it was like, a, like half of the companies in that conference have become like uh, big, or well, the other half, got busted, but, but there, there were some of like the very historical companies there. And then we talk in that conference, we talked for the first time with Barry Silbert, which become an investor from this issue. He, which, this, this which, issue conference, which conference was this again? What, what did you say? San that? Jose in May 2013. Oh, okay, okay. I've heard about this conference many times. It I, was I, very I, important I wasn't conference. there, but there's lots of people. <laughs> okay, 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 yeah. But it, it was an... Tons of excitement, um, and then talked a second time to Adam. Again, did, I don't even imagine if he recalls the conversation. Uh, but it's, so th th this is coming from an entrepreneur from Argentina, an emerging market. Like it's very difficult to fundraise in the Silicon Valley if you are not living in the Silicon Valley, and if you're not like. Uh, you don't. It, it didn't went to Stanford or any like very known um, university, so had no pedigree at all. And um, but like was telling the story to everyone. So what what actually ended up kicking me was that um, then in a I was in a meetup. I think it was in SF, and I was uh, pitch like pitching. One random guy I didn't know, and he intro me to Ben Davenport. Ben at the time was uh, the lead of Messenger in, in Facebook and was one of the investors in um, in BuzzBC. 
And when I explained Bitcoin Argentina, he was, whoa, it was like a sparkle in there. And then he invited me next day to pitch him again into in the Facebook offices. Uh, ben later was uh, doing, was product manager, product for Instagram. And he said, well, you're too early uh, for me to invest, but um, I'm investing in this uh, accelerator called Boost BC. I will intro you to Adam Draper. <laughs> so this was the first, first intro to Adam. Okay. <laughs> and this, but this time was in person. Uh, and I, I got into the office. I sh like, we show the product, like we show it so that he could like see the screens and how, how the flow was. And, and, and at that time we got one client. It was one hotel that was churching through us uh, in the middle of Argentina that, that, and, and he was getting reservations through us. Uh, so this was, uh, and that proved like the, 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 the concept. And, and that way we, we got into Busbisi. And that, in, and then Adam intro us to Tim Draper. Dra Tim become like a, our mentor during, during the program. He invest in, in us, and that kind of like roll into like everything. It started to move, then Barry, then like, uh, and we close our seed, and and that that took us off the ground uh, in that in that year. Uh, but it, it it was like complex first round like uh, so we we had two rounds that were very difficult uh, one was that one the first uh, the first uh, see like getting into the accelerator and, and the scene um and then we 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 struggled then in a second one in this that was our series a in december 2016. that was also was very hard one it was in the winter after um so th and then during that period bitcoin just like went into the first rally in the december 2013 it was like exploding uh so th there was a ton of attention like we grew a lot at that time we continue to to grow on our product but then uh so over the first years, we were mostly focusing in, in Argentina. Um, and then 2015 and 16 were like real winters. They were like the, a ton of complex, all the excitement went off after the, the first crash. And, and people was just stopping, did not talk more about like Bitcoin and started to talk just about blockchain and how Bitcoin was dead, but the thing was blockchain. And we were a very Bitcoin company all of history. Uh, and we did not change or <laughs> we did not went into like trying to, to lure people into like being a blockchain company. We always were a company to, access, to get access to cryptos. Um, so, uh, then we, we were growing, but like not at the rhythm to become like profitable. Um, so 2016, it was like very hard year and like we, we got close to profitability by the, the, by, by December, but we have like one month of runway or we will start having to like cut, uh, uh, yeah, big on the team, but we closed our CDSA in December, 2016. And that was like a, our CDSA, that was a very hard uh, uh, race. And after that, it was like the rally started to appear. Uh, the 2017 rally started to, to grow and grow. Uh, and we actually never used the money of the CDSA. <laughs> <laughs> okay that's not bad right well you guys, bad. you guys took some strategic bets like <laughs> the, the micro strategy before micro strategy <laughs> yes <laughs> um but any any advice to like uh, people who are doing that i mean you you said it was hard obviously to raise money because you had all these 
you know, kind of narratives you had to get through Bitcoin, Argentina, the product. Um, yeah. But but I mean, yeah, like in retrospect, you you feel like they they kind of helped, uh, you know, bring more than just money, I guess, if you will, because all three of those names are fairly prolific in the space. And, yeah. uh, and, you know, in full disclosure, I think, yeah, all three of them are investors in Unocoin as well. So, yeah. so um, they're obviously special, but any, any, but do you want to comment on any of uh, kind of like Tim or Barry and, and I don't know, in terms of what they help bring to the table? Uh, I, I think that they're, they're all very, very helpful. Um, I, should also mention Pantera, which were very early on investors. Um, mm. I think um, the, 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 the best funds in, in crypto got it early that this had to be a global thing. It has to become a global, um, uh, a global ecosystem. And I think that's why they, they open up into like, they become like, I think Silicon Valley now is, is opening up more and it's gonna be forced to open up into the world. Like investors in general are gonna have to think global for technology. Um, like you can hire anywhere now, you can start from anywhere. I, I don't think the, uh, the stronghold that had Silicon Valley in like before into like, uh, all the serendipity that, that happened inside the Silicon Valley that they created so much uh, momentum. You, you wanted to be a tech entrepreneur, you had to be there. Uh, I think like we, after 2020, like when it, it was already starting to happen, but, but right now I think it's just every technology team is becoming distributed right now. So I think it's a, it's a bit different, but at that time, like, um, especially for crypto in, in crypto from the early on was like very distributed and the work that had to be done was around the world. So I think many crypto investors made the, uh, the hypothesis that there's going to be needed like um, exchanges, wallets, trade like uh, market makers, the OTC desk, they're gonna have to be everywhere. They're gonna have to be in the entire world. And I think that that's, that's the thesis that made them the invest in the Drapio of India, Unicorn, or in the, yeah. <laughs> the Coinbase of like Africa, uh, Bitpesa. Uh, it's like mm. they, they, they made this, like uh, they, they were looking for these the startups that will build the local infrastructure in, in each one of these countries. And especially for any companies that is doing, that is touching the, the local financial uh, services, you, th there is so much local regulation that, that it, it's difficult to have one company that wins it all uh, immediately. It's not, it's, it's not as easy as like, um, as Facebook, that's just, you just log in and sign up from anywhere in the world. It's like, you only need to translate uh, for, a, for, a, for a FinTech or a exchange that has, that has fiat currency. It's a lot, a lot more harder. Uh, maybe in the future, there will be more consolidation of the industry, but that, that, that is something that, that, that I think it, it, it happens soon. Anyway, so in, in terms of advice, I think like, um, I guess like that is not like being from emerging market is not such a, um, such, uh, such a barrier right now. But the, the, the thing I will make that I think will be useful is that um, when you are fundraising, especially for the first time, um, you don't have like a, a track record to show. Uh, and if you don't have like the pedigree of coming from, you know, like I went to Stanford or I went to MIT or I went to Caltech or like some like very prestigious tech um, university that, that, you know, like has very good filtering. Uh, the thing that you can do is like, now it's very cheap to build prototypes of like anything. 
uh, especially in technology, and and no one uh, argues with metrics. Like if you can like if you can bootstrap something and you can get um, and, and you can get some early traction, like um, then on and and you can show some metrics. It, no, it doesn't matter where you're coming from. Uh, people won't argue with metrics. They won't argue with traction. So, so that's so. I think like if you are in that condition, the, the most important thing is build a prototype that shows the idea beyond a deck, and get some clients or like some way to validate the the, the idea, and and that. Uh, and then there, there are there is a lot, especially in this industry, there is a lot of liquid money, um, and they, there are investors everywhere now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, we'll carry on with your story. This is fascinating. Uh, okay, so so you're what year are we in now? Twenty. <laughs> We're 2016, 2017. 2016. Okay, yeah. so what happens after that? So like, uh, fast forwarding now, like so. Um, we we we, not, we are now focusing in like uh, uh, continue to grow through South America. Uh, we started to work in, in, in open up in Brazil. So right now we have about uh, we have over six hundred k users. Four hundred k are from Argentina, two hundred k from Brazil, uh, and then some more across across the region. Uh, we have many uh, many products and lines of of, of, of work. Uh, the main products is still are wallets, but the, um, we also have an exchange. We have one of the largest uh, OTC desks in in, in South America. Uh, we are also since 2017 working a, a lot into. Um, into credit and how to use uh, the blockchain uh, for for creating, especially for us, um, we're very interested into um, sort out peer to peer lending and and to to people. Uh, with so um, uh, right now there is like a a lot of innovation and, and growth into what is called DeFi, which is basically. Um, Collateralized. Ah, my English is uh, sometimes um, yeah, this debt with collateral, and and there is a ton of innovation around it. Uh, but what uh, we find more interesting is how to build a system. Uh, we're working in, in some like we're working in a protocol that is uh, for peer-to-peer -peer lending without collateral. Or with collateral and a mix with with and without collateral, um, that's called RCM. And we also have credit inside the wallet. That's a more like fintech credit. Uh, I think there's gonna be a ton of innovation there going into the future. Like if once we solve into uh, better ways to have identity and, and trust, this is gonna be the, the next thing for for DeFi. Uh, once we can go under collateral, um, so that we can like lend to people that don't have money, basically, like the people that actually need it, uh, not the people that is seeking for leverage. Um, and right now, like our, our focus is to continue to grow across uh, across Latin America and all Spanish and Portuguese speaking countries. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, okay. And then, and I guess, I mean, you, so you talked a bit about, well, a little bit about your backstory. You talked about kind of, you know, coming into Bitcoin, also seeing how Bitcoin was a bit of an aha moment. You went into the story behind Bitpagos, which eventually got renamed to yes. Ripio, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the investors that came in along the mix, you've got now hundreds of thousands of users. It's a pretty, pretty like, you know, exciting yeah. story, um, you know, I, but it's different, right? It's like building a business in Bitcoin is more than just like ones and zeros, right? 
like I think you alluded to some of the challenges um, that that you know that that we face as entrepreneurs in the space. But any any kind of thoughts on on you know how people should be thinking though about like if they are again one of my kind of like goals is is to kind of get others to to build Bitcoin businesses right and and so and I think some of the challenges seem quite challenging and insurmountable but. I also want to give people hope that, you know, that if you take that step that, you know, that, that it's not so bad after all, because um, at the end of the day, you know, it's like humans that we're yes. dealing with. So <laughs> I, I think like, I, I hope we have done like uh, that we're doing the, the hardest work, you know, like it's because we are uh, in the, in the companies that we start, like we interface with the legacy system. And and it's in a it's, and it's a very regulated area. Uh, I hope that the things that get enabled now that are into the future, um, they can rely on us to be able to not need to like you know like think in all like go into all the struggles that we went through. Uh, for example, it's at the beginning it was very very hard to get a bank account. It was super hard and it's still hard to operate with banks when you tell them that your business is crypto. So it has to do, we, we do a lot of compliance. We have very good programs with uh, um, audit or systems. Like we, we do a ton of things that are pretty hard to uh, make banks comfortable to operate with us, uh, which are not cheap and like are not easy to do either. Um, and then, but that's it. Like we build that 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 infrastructure, and 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 I think it's one of the things that is allowing DeFi to to grow so easily and so so uh, so fast is that they don't have to worry about how people get crypto. Like uh, they they just build on top of it, and and don't no ask for any permissions or like. Uh, and they can innovate into that. So I think like that's one of the things that 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 I think is gonna enable so much more innovation uh, when you can like innovate freely uh, without uh, without having to get us uh, so many things. I, I there's there is still things that you know, different projects like have to like struggle right now. I, I'm talking about this because it's like a very hot uh, space. But you can also see, for example, how much is uh, NFT growth growing right now? How much digital art uh, is is growing in the last few months uh, with the use of uh, non fungible tokens? And uh, like you're seeing, like very known artists starting to to create um, tokens for their digital art. And like, um, for example, Bleep. Uh, Two weeks ago, like doing like um, amazing piece of work in crypto, in crypto, and selling it uh, has from from the drop at one dollar and now like selling each piece at thousands of dollars, and this is just giving uh, um, and this is giving um, business model to digital art, uh, and these sites are currently exploding. And they're all entirely built on crypto, and they don't have to ask for any permissions into how what to do, how to do it. And and I and I think the the I will say that it's it's becoming easier if you are building something that is built on top of all the infrastructure that has been built so far. Uh, there is still a lot to do, uh, but there are. Um, there is there is a lot more space for innovation as this is a very open uh, space like you don't have to ask for for permissions to anyone uh, and no one is going to change you the apis uh, uh, or, uh, or the or the interfaces if you become successful like when you're running so yeah. speaking of digital art, I, I'm really, I uh, interviewed Tatiana just recently yeah. as well, right? She, she's, uh, um, but what, what are your, because I know you, you've also toyed around with music a bit, but what are your thoughts around, 
like music and and crypto like do you think there's a world where musicians are empowered by this movement in a way where just like digital artists are taking advantage of it there's a way to maybe create limited a number of i don't yeah. know of like so, certain so songs like, and creating a marketplace i don't know what it, what do you want to call it so what what, what, I, what isn't, I think is the recent yeah, yeah, space yeah, for is that um I think the way is, is for music. I think the way music is consumed right now, the um, the listeners uh, are um, are expecting music to be free, and and they are, uh, and there is so much. So the this area of like the internet allow like anyone to um, to publish for free and distribute it everywhere very yeah, very easily so i think that that business like that i don't think there is a business model into cherishing for listening or to uh or for viewing anything in, in any form of art or any I, I don't think like going into the future i don't think it makes sense to church for viewing uh, or for perceiving a, a piece of art. Uh, what I do think is going to be like that, that all this technology is enabling is that there is a market for uh, owning, which is it's so like every like every every artist, big or, or small, uh, builds an audience and builds like a, a following of a, a people that follow you, and then. Um, I think there is a market for for that people to that that follows you to um, to own something to be part of the community, and and that's um, so that's why like the current way like a small artists uh, make their livings is like they, they have uh, some people that follow them and they they buy the tickets they go to the concerts they uh, they show up and and. And what I think and tokens allow is to to have like I think artists are going to start uh, uh, being able to use NFTs to make tokens that um, in, in the in the in the in, not in the technological uh, uh, meaning of the word, but in more like uh, uh, a token that you belong to a community and that you have some ownership into that. Like if there is an artist that you admire and you follow and that you like all his work, you now can own a dish, a piece of their art, being it digital. Uh, and I think for uh, for music and both digital artists, especially this is opening up a, a, a business model that is viable. Uh, Interesting, and and I and I, I think it's gonna be more and more more of that. And like, like if you look the numbers of you know, sites like Nifty Gateway or like um, Super Rare, um, they they are like or like uh, Rare, Rareable or Open they, they are having like half million visits uh, per month, uh, and this is something that like. Uh, that exploded the last last three months, um, and and I think this is um, this is something that will will continue to to grow as more well like as, as more artists start like proving they they can they can make money in, into yeah. Do you need a space for like a, a like a no? Well, oh, it was funny because Tatiana was like at the end, she was like, you know, I think the best advice I can give artists is just to buy Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 I will, I will I, say like the, the best, um, the 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 best. Uh, I I come from a family that a ton of musicians. Like uh, uh, like my mother uh, played piano, and like my brother, uh, I have a younger brother that. Has, heavy metal band and he plays um, um, bass and drums. I bad at every instrument, but I do some things in the electronic music. And, and I have a brother that is also a compositor of um, classical music. 
So I, I kind of know a ton of parties, but and I've done a few things. But so what I, what I think like the most important thing for any artist in any time, and like not now, like from ages ago, is to build a, an audience around you, like a public that that wants to see your work, and then like if you have like a thousand real followers you can make a living on, on art and it's the, that they you will find a way to like they 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 will want you to continue to work <laughs> and like the, your real followers they, they will pay you for continue to work and they, there are many ways to do that like there is people uh, doing it with Pat patreon and there is people doing it in like and there are different ways to to achieve that. Um, and some are through subscriptions to like you have like exclusive content. Others are uh, like I, and I and I think uh, non fungibles that touch this technology is one tool, another tool that you can use to to build build around that. Uh, ah, and yeah, the yeah. thing I will, I will, mm. and, and the word of caution I will say is like, be careful on what you tokenize. Like as an artist, I think you should like do most of your work uh, for free to the world and to to expose you to give like let let it be the thing that it spreads, uh, and then make a few rare things that your followers can own and they then they can use it to show that they that that they are like they care about you don't make thousands mm. of non functionals just make some few that are for some specific people that is the people that care for you uh hey, hey just to, just to switch gears a little bit in terms of um yeah, the like the third question I was mentioning earlier is, is like this this contrarian belief amongst Bitcoiners. So is there any one truth that you know having now been in this space, oh my god, almost what eight years now it sounds like. Yes. <laughs> um any any beliefs that you hold that you think most other Bitcoiners would disagree with you on, but uh, but you know, you believe to be true type of thing? Um it, it, let, let's start with something different, something that I, that changed on me. So uh, early, very early on, I, will, I was a maximalist. A bit like 2013, you asked me, is any of, this, any of these other coins will, will survive? I would say, no, the only coin is going to be Bitcoin because it's very easy to copy everything and Bitcoin will copy everything and they are all, all the rest are going to go bust. Uh, but now, looking at like how how it did play out, Bitcoin is like uh, I still hold Bitcoin, like it's like the main thing I hold, but I hold it for the store of value. Uh, I I hold it for like an Argentinian holding money, but um... okay, we're live again. So yeah, sorry, can you repeat that again? Oh, one. Okay, we're back. A couple of technical glitches, but yeah, you were saying the thing that's different. The thing that, that I think is different is like before I was a complete maximalist. If you ask me in 2013, like it's, it was only going to be Bitcoin. Bitcoin will copy everything else that is that works. And it's awesome that there is experimentation inside, but once something works, it will be pulled in. But now it's like the, the, the Bitcoin community is super conservative. And I think it's, it's, it's all right. It's like, if you don't want it to, like, you, you don't want it to lose value. So it does an experiment um, and it doesn't bring things inside. Uh, but, I, but I now see that there is a lot more value and to have many, uh, many chains uh, specialized for, for different things. And, and I uh, and I think like Bitcoin can continue to be digital gold, um, and I will continue to hold Bitcoin. But I also use a ton of Ethereum, and I have a, like uh, uh, and I have other currencies also. But for me, the main one is still Bitcoin. Uh, so that 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 is something that that changed on on, on how I I see the future. 
And you asked me what I see different from, from the hey, rest. Hey, can I, can I, before you move on, can I ask you something about that? So yes, are you close with the RSK guys? Uh, I'm, I'm close with them. I know them from a long time. You know time. them, right? Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Because, because like, I always think about them. I always feel like not enough people know about them, but <laughs> like, does, don't they answer that question though? Or aren't they supposed to be answering that question around? Bitcoin is conservative, therefore, or like, let's say, for example, um, <clears throat> or for example, uh, sorry, I wanted to say liquid, but not liquid, the um, yes. side chains, like the idea of side yeah. chains, it, like, well, why did that never, you know, I, I materialize, if you will, like Turing completeness, but on like kind of things that don't risk the core, why did that never, or do you think it's time will come or I don't know, what are your thoughts? <laughs> My, I, what what I think is that um, the there was like a I, I know them a, a very well many of them but I think it was a timing issue like the the what they are offering so Ethereum got momentum before so it's basically Ethereum on the Bitcoin blockchain but it, Ethereum got That's momentum asking, yeah. two two years before. And, and now there is a ton of networks and code that is already been written into Ethereum. Gotcha. And RSK never was like, it, it, it launched two years later. And, and then you don't see the amount, like, like the, the, the more that the time passes, the network in Ethereum is stronger. Uh, the more code is written, the more like people is using it, the more tools are built around it. Uh, and it lost that track uh, into... So the, the, I, I think the, the, the hope for RSK is that they, they find a use case that they can serve better than Ethereum. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and they maybe build into of one use case that becomes them and especially on, on something but that's 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 a thing i'm not seeing yeah 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 uh, there is it's an amazing team and i and i think they they they're they're awesome they they had some struggle early on into 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 launch and be like very productive into into that in their, their first years um but but it's that network effects are very strong the, like no, it's funny because that was the argument that you think Bitcoin would use, right? Because the network effects behind yeah. Bitcoin are also strong. Um, okay, but uh, well, sorry, and then you were going to follow up with the second part of that question, which is like, as it pertains to the world at large, any, any I don't know, contrarian beliefs on, on that front? You'll have to pass. <laughs> uh, no, so something I think like many, like, like, so I think we are on the early years of the internet. We are not even in, on the early years of Bitcoin. So we, we haven't yet seen all of what the internet is going to change humanity um, in, in the way that we collaborate and work. So, um, so, so I think uh, there is still a lot more that is going to be transformed just from the internet itself uh, that is not yet realized. Um, and then I, I, what I think that is a bit contrary to, especially the people in this industry, is that we are even earlier on, on crypto. Um, so so in, in order to become what many of us dream, it's gonna have to become much older. And, and, and a lot more things need to, uh, need, need to happen and, it, and and one of the things that we that needs to happen to crypto is is has, it just has to get old, um, because many of many especially many of in of us in this industry wanted to be you know immediately cover the entire population of the world. <laughs> like we already want to be like a hundred million users, uh, or 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 in, in the planet or or more. Um, but we're asking people to um, to trust their their wealth, their 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 um, 
and and their security into holding crypto. Uh, and it's a technology that it has like 10 years is nothing compared with it. Like the like gold exists since the beginning of time. Uh, like it, it's not gonna stop existing. Uh, and humanity has used it to store value for thousands of years. And the US dollar has a hundreds of like, uh, it's, it's a nation that has hundreds of years. Um, it's also not gonna, not, not gonna disappear immediately. And Bitcoin can get hacked, can get like, can like the mathematic will be wrong. There are many things that could be, could, could be wrong uh, that every year that passes, or the problems that they you can get, they get fixed, or the things that we think might be a doom scenario don't don't happen. So every year that gets a little bit older, it's a little bit safer, uh, and it's and I think um, we need to get more a lot more patient. Like I, I think like I, I I think like compared to the rest of entrepreneurs in this in the, this industry that wants to that, that are used to the, the we grow we're growing at an exponential rate like if you see everything in crypto is growing at an exponential rate but this is lower than all these technologies that we said that we'd seen in like from the 2000 like uh, from one day like from one year to the next one you see like or in two or three years, you see WhatsApp from nothing into like everybody in the world using it. Um, to to um, and uh, and I think that is one thing that is going to be different with Bitcoin we, or and crypto in general. It's going to take maybe two decades in to get to the complete uh, potential. Uh, mainly because one of the things that we're asking people is to is trust and trust is 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 something that you win over time. Um, or you lose it in five minutes. <laughs> or you lose it in five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to, uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's so true. Hey, I was going to ask you something. Um, do you think much about AI? Um, yes, I, I, I do. I, I, I know a little bit of, uh, before, some, uh, I have played with TensorFlow many times. Where we do some AI things inside inside Rapier, um, and 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 I do think about it often, but I don't. Have, yeah, like, do you have any? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I was, do you think much about like? I guess not. Not necessarily uh, like application specific AI or like narrow bands of AI, but you know this like more esoteric uh, kind of insinuation that I think a lot of people like. Well, I mean, a lot of people, including Elon Musk and people in the Valley talk about, which is this idea of a singularity, which is this emergence of almost like, you know what I mean, the, right? The like risk of general AI. Is... Making it. So, general so AI, yeah, are, that's word. Yeah, there are, there are a few. So, so one thing is that uh, something that we, we, we always, so, something that may not be true uh, is that our hypothesis that we are conscious is that we are conscious because we are very smart. Like there is a level of intelligence that makes makes you conscious. Like you are a sufficiently advanced information processing system becomes self-aware. That is one of the ways that we have like like that we one of the hypotheses that we have about uh, how consciousness emerges from a system that might not be true that like we are building a smarter and a smarter things that are not aware of themselves like we build cars that they they can drive themselves that they process a ton of things about their surroundings. They are highly recursive systems and yet we could call them into fall from a cliff and they want to stop. They will ask like if we call them to accelerate into a cliff, they will accelerate into the cliff. And, and there is 
no expression of, uh, of self-awareness in any of the systems. So maybe it doesn't come from intelligence. Maybe it's, it's, you know, maybe it's true and maybe we're far from the level of intelligence that, that we need or the recursiveness of a system or, uh, or we're missing, but we're definitely missing something um, into explaining what consciousness is. So I don't think we will see, will be, for me, the, the probability that I, uh, an AI becomes self-aware and wants to like destroy us because we'll destroy it uh, is very low because we don't, in order to build something, we need to understand it first. We don't even know where consciousness is coming from. So we are less likely to, to be able to reproduce it. So you're saying, it's, so that's, you're saying that's, most likely consciousness is not uh, a you know function or dependent on just like the, how many computations per second you can do. Yes. It's far greater than that. It's something more subtle. Um, and therefore, maybe we're not close. But, you know, even narrow bands, though, like such as cars driving themselves, do, however, pose the, the, some I, I sort think of... there are other risks that are yeah do you, do, you, do you think job do you think job loss is a risk or do you think that's being like a luddite like saying oh you know well like you know you know because like i said just with just with the i think the transition alone, the transition will be very hard i don't okay so that brings think... me my next question that brings me my next question which is ubi uh you know do you, have you thought much about universal basic income is it something that's playing out given this covid uh you know pandemic? I, I don't uh, really i don't think is the answer i don't i don't know the mm. answer but I don't mm. think it's the answer. Like mm. you see, one of the issues of Argentina is how much the government spends, um, how, how big is the budget of the government into all these uh, programs to assist people. And, and these programs are very expensive and they are then um, financed by printing money and that destroys the currency. Um, so it's not it's not easy to understand how the entire system of an entire system of Ubi will work out. Do you think it be it could be private market based? Do you think it could be something like cryptocurrency maybe or something like that? Or maybe really? we need to start like maybe we need to start like thinking the entire game. Like we we are a species that we are a species that collaborates. Uh, making stories and playing games and and we like maybe we need to start rethinking the game because we have built the game entirely into well you know like the, there are uh, uh, hypotheses and axioms uh, axiomas i don't know how to translate them that are like built into the system one is a scarcity and ais and machines working from us will make a scarcity is something that is much less relevant. Like maybe like, you know, like the, the needs of a human are very simple. I right? like, um, or you need 3000 calories to shelter, um, safety, um, and then like that covers the, like, yeah, you need health, food, um uh, shelter and that that covers the like, the physical needs but then the needs that you know that that will like you know in a world that you just have that it will be horrible <laughs> for a human because we need other things that bring meaning and how so uh what we need to find out is how, how we, we bring meaning to ourselves uh in a world with with less scarcity um, and, and there are many ways we can build that. Um, and an economy is maybe something that like, we can detach from humanity or not, like, but we can make, start making that questions, that thinking. Yeah, it's fascinating um, stuff, man. But, but um, yeah, sorry, sorry, continue. U UBI sounds like a patch. UBI sounds like the easy fix. Yeah, and I don't think that it's an easy fix. I think we're gonna have to rethink heavy and, and 
That, do you know that's who Yanni? I think is going to be the transition. I'm very positive. I feel like the technology will give us a ton of power. Mm. And, and I'm very optimistic about the passing through them. Mm. Uh, I, I don't, I, what I do think is the struggle in, the tw- in between is going to be extremely hard. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. But what did you say? It's stories and games. Yeah, right. That, that, uh, that, that's, that's so true. That's so true. I could just see people sitting around like a fire, you know, a couple hundred years ago just doing that. Because <laughs> what else are you going to do? Um, <laughs> hey, man, listen, you know, I want to be mindful of your time as well. I, I only had a few minutes uh, left together. So any, any, I guess, uh, you know, I was, I was going to ask you to share, like, in terms of Twitter, websites, where people can learn more, whatever, whatever. But before that, any, uh, you know, kind of finishing wise words of wisdom. Uh, like I said, you know, you've been through a lot. Uh, I have a kind of respect for you. And I don't know, just, uh, yeah, anything else you want to share that maybe I didn't ask or, or maybe bring up? Um, don't know. I, I will say that... Um this i guess like a lot a ton of people in crypto will be hearing this like well the, the audience is going to be definitely in crypto maybe there are a few that are not yet they're working on this um i think uh, i will say there is so much to be done um there is so so much to be done in this space uh, so maybe some people will think like this is like uh, all the spaces are covered no this is there is a ton to work like everything that is um, on paper today is going to become software and, and it's going to and this technology is basically on the on the roots is rethinking how humanity collaborates and and we are and and, the, and it's also a um, challenge to the nation state and and we we're proving that we can collaborate at a humanity scale uh, with this technology and and think about that like think how we like even on with this with the pandemia what uh, how many people are starting to work entirely online we can bring everyone together uh, and this is what this technology is about and how to call like money is an instrument the, for human collaboration and there is a ton more to be done uh, you can register any value into this and, and just uh, we'll welcome more entrepreneurs here. We have yeah. done a ton of the groundwork to make it easy. <laughs> yeah, right. That, yeah, that's, that's the goal, man. Okay. I like that. So, and then are you, you're on Twitter, right? So where, yeah. where do people find you there if they want to, you know? I'm, I'm everywhere. I'm as S Serrano 44. For Sebastian awesome, Serrano. man. And then Ripio dot. Yes ripio.com or .com. In, um, on on social media is ripio app rip you app awesome man well you know keep well, fighting the good fight uh brother if there's uh, nothing else then maybe i'll, I'll uh, bring this one to a close awesome nice was awesome all right